This is the second and final part about pump faults, how to solve them and what to look out for. The 15 in 1550-1560 means the distance from flange to flange on the pump. 50 or 60 can mean 5 or 6 metres. In a sealed system, that's between the pump and the furthest radiator. On an open system, that would mean from the pump to the top of the water in the expansion tank. This slide shows us that the cold feed should be 22 millimetres and not 15 and also goes underneath the flow pipe to eliminate air locks. By extending the open vent pipe above the expansion tank by at least 2 metres will eliminate pumping over. The large screw in the centre is only for venting. Do not remove this if there is any water or pressure in the system. This is a common mistake that installers make. This is extremely dangerous as the pump is seized up and water at high pressure will come out and possibly damage the PCB. Always refill the system with boiler silencer F2. This is much better and stronger to lubricate the pump and other components. Every year, every single heating system must be checked for the water quality to make sure that there is enough inhibitor in the system. This is a requirement and is compulsory. Installers should be using an app to determine the water quality so it could be checked and verified and recorded by the manufacturer of the chemicals. In a three bedroom semi or smaller system, we're talking about nine rads, the pressure should only be one bar, so high pressure will actually ruin the pump, create scale and sludge. A three bedroom semi or smaller, nine radiators or less, the system only needs to be pressurized to one bar. An external automatic bypass in 22 mil copper is compulsory on every system to keep the flow rate through the main heat exchanger at a constant level. An external expansion vessel may be necessary to stop the pressure increasing in that system. Thanks for stopping on our channel, which is dedicated to central heating. And as you can see, I've been doing this a long time. Whether you install or you have heating, hopefully my videos will make a difference. But please leave me a comment in the section below. Lights, action, camera, let's begin. And when we drain down or fill up the system, there's obviously going to be lots of air. So let me show you how to remove the air from the pump the easy way. Before we can fill the system up for the first time, or maybe refill it because we've been decorating or changing a part, we need to make sure that the impeller at the back of the pump is free and ready to roll. So first of all, what we're going to do is protect the PCB. Lots of kitchen roll underneath here. And then we're simply gonna undo the screw, put a screwdriver in to fit the slot, and we're gonna turn it anti-clockwise. We'll do a few turns, because remember that it's pumping 
upwards that's why it's anti-clockwise and then we'll put a few turns in this direction once we're happy that the impeller is nice and free we can put the screw back in and just give it a few turns get the slot now we can fill the system up to one bar or 1.2 at this stage, what we're going to do next is we're just going to loosen this screw a little bit. We don't want to remove the screw completely because there's going to be one bar pressure and that screw could fall out miles away or even worse, water can cascade. Well, we've got the electric off, so it doesn't matter. But all we need to do is just literally just loosen it a little bit and we'll start getting a teardrop. Once we've got three, four, five teardrops, we could just carefully Turn the screw back to the off position and now we can run the heating system in the normal way for about a minute or two cough and splutter and as you can see here on this particular model we've got an automatic air vent and the cap is loose it always has to be loose any sign of debris if you're refilling means that you've got a problem with the expansion vessel and lack of inhibitor whatever so that's a telltale sign that we've covered in other videos but here we just want to see so lots of kitchen roll all around here because some inhibitors can foam up so we've run the boiler cough and spluttered on the heating side switch it off switch a tap on or demand hot water on the system and again cough and splutter check the gauges back to where it should be which is one bar or 1.4 and then we can hand the boiler over to the customer and that's how we fill and vent a pump filling and venting on a ups3 is much much easier so if this is a first time fill for a combi or system all the rads are full of water the boilers full of water etc don't switch the power on because we want to vent the pump before it starts rotating so the way we do it is very simple we have a crosshead screwdriver put it in the center here and this is a dry pocket so we don't have to worry about water press it in turn it a few times anti-clockwise and then clockwise again and release and i'm going to show you some close-ups of the neons that come up because here the live neutral earth we can't measure that we can't do a resistance to earth test or a short circuit test because it's digital we have to rely on the lights here is a QR code which you can download and then you can see it and keep it on your phone. But sometimes they don't work. Usually on the UPS3 it does, but if you go to a boiler manufacturer or some other uh, storage as it were, sometimes that QR code doesn't work, but you have to have it. So I would suggest you look at our video on UPS3. In there, I've taken snapshots so you can take a photograph of those snapshots and keep it on your phone at all times before you go to houses and be stuck with the lights and things and trying to find which light does what um, is going to be a challenge. It's definitely going to be a challenge. If you see a red neon shining here, that's danger because obviously the pump is seized up or something is seriously long, wrong, you'd have to look in the book and see what to do. If it's got other lights on, they'll be at different spaces because remember, this has got seven speeds, seven positions. So you need to know which position this pump is in to make sure it's the correct one for the house and the system that you're actually working on. So two things, look at the video, Download the app that's got the QR codes and all the lights. Do that as quickly as you can because you'll walk into something and as a breakdown engineer, you should have this and be prepared. So let's have a go and uh, I'll show you some close-ups of what we can do. Now you can see a close-up of all the different neons. So when you first switch it on, it should actually have the green light and then the number two and number three setting show it's in maximum speed. It will also do a little bit of self-diagnostics. So when we want to change the speed or the settings, we press that cursor 
and as you can see it goes from one two three and so on through the seven stages that it can develop here's the dry pocket screw so we could just push it in and you can see it's trying to chew up the screwdriver so always remember never ever have the power on or the pump rotating when you're trying to remove the air because it's going to create air and you'll destroy that impeller Our books are available from the website mrcombi.com and they're sent first class, signed for. Price includes postage and packing and there is no VAT. And don't forget our special offer, you get both books for just £40.